Hey guys, this is K2's Retro Workshop. Today we're going to be dealing with this 386DX40 motherboard. As you can see, it's a little baby AT board. My hand almost covers the whole thing. It's a late manufacturer board, which helps make it super small. Everything's contained in our chipset here. We've got eight SIM slots with one meg each, so we've got eight megs of RAM here. I believe 128 kilobytes of external cache. And when I got this board a few years ago, I was able to get to the battery and cut it out before any damage happened. So this board is in really good shape. You'll notice down here at the bottom, though, that we've got two expansion slots. This expansion slot is your typical expansion slot for a 387 coprocessor. I do have one that goes in there, but I'm just not running it. This expansion slot is meant for the 486 DLC type processors. This is a 40 megahertz chip. It should just drop right in and bam, or so we hope. I don't see any jumpers. There is a jumper right here for activating the math coprocessor, but there's no jumper on here for this socket. And I think that's kind of funny. Um, we'll just have to see how that goes. But I've also got another chip that I would like to try in here a 486 DRX2 3366. This is a clock doubled 33AT bus processor that should be about as high a performance as you can get out of this board. So we're going to play with some benchmarks and just see what we get. Hopefully it'll just be a plug and play. Alright, I've got down here in the bottom of the screen the 486 DLC 40 installed. It just goes right into the socket. I don't see any motherboard jumper settings for this. Maybe the chipset's got some sort of switch in it or something that makes it work. I'm not sure. Let's see what we get here. Nothing. Hmm. We've got a clock. Reset circuit's working like it's supposed to. I don't know what's going on here. Let's try again. Nothing. Alright. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Okay, so I've done some research and I have figured out what happened with this setup. This processor was getting surprisingly hot really fast. In just the small amount of time I had it turned on earlier, it was hotter than the chip normally is when it's been running a while. So that leads me to believe this chip is still running while this one is trying to run as well. And it turns out that's exactly what was happening. I had speculated that maybe the chipset could turn off this processor but after looking at the data sheet pin 54 on the 386DX is the float pin it's an active low pin that when asserted basically turns this chip off all the IO on it go high impedance and it disconnects itself essentially from the circuit which would allow us to run this but pin 54 on this motherboard isn't connected to anything it's got a pad, but there's no trace underneath, there's no vias, there's no trace this way, nothing. It's literally floating there, which is exactly what the data sheet says to do, but there's a socket here. And so we need 54 to be grounded to be able to use this socket. That kind of makes me wonder if this socket is even connected at all. Uh, we have a few options. One option is to just remove this chip, which I'm not going to do. The next option is to use this little capacitor spot right here. This is ground. I can put a jumper in here and run a little wire over to 54 to make it, to assert it and make it go high impedance and disconnect it. Another option that I have is to bridge 54 to pin 55. If I do that, pin 55 is VSS, so it's ground. So I should be able to just make a quick bridge between 54 and 55, see if it's even possible to use this socket. Since the motherboard wasn't even provisioned for it, this is a version 3 board. 
So I'm guessing it wasn't meant to have this processor and this processor at the same time. So instead of doing a permanent fix like a jumper, I'm going to do a temporary bridge between those two pins and then we'll fire it up and see if it works. All right, let's get this soldered. All right, so that should be pin 51, 2, 3, 4, and 55 bridged together. That should be what we need to get this board to work. All right, so without removing anything from the board, all we've done is bridge those two pins on the 386. Let's see if it fires up. Look, we've already got activity down here. And we got our splash screen. Perfect. It sees us as a 486 DLC. That's great. Okay, so let's see if I can type it right. What we do for CPU speed here. Huh? CPU clock is at 141. Not sure why it's reading that. It says it's a 486 DX and running equivalent of a 168 megahertz AT. That is almost double what we were getting with the 386 DX40. Let's try 3D Bench. So we've got the same video card and everything that we had before. The only change that we've made is putting that processor in there. And wow, that looks like it's making a significant difference in how that's going. That is very smooth. It's interesting, I had always read that the 486 DLC really wasn't that popular of an upgrade because it wasn't that great. But we just improved system performance by a significant margin. We've got a 20 on this. So let's see if a uh, PC player bench runs better. I would imagine it would. Everything so far has. Let's see. Uh, I think that's faster. I honestly can't tell you. It's such a slideshow. It doesn't look smoother. I, okay, there's a few more frames, I suppose. This benchmark drops frames if the computer can't keep up instead of the other benchmark that goes frame by frame. 2.1! Uh, the 386 DX40 by itself did a 1.6 on this benchmark. So the same exact system is able to pull down 25% roughly performance increase. That's incredible from just throwing a processor in there. Well, that's great that that works. So what we'll do now is I'm gonna pull this chip and I wanna try the Cyrix. I'm not as confident that we're going to get the performance out of that that we are out of the DX, out of the DLC 40 here, mostly because we've gotta drop the Now what I want to try next is this Cyrix 486 DXR266. I'm not sure how this one's going to end up working out as far as a performance comparison to the 40. The 40 megahertz chip runs synchronous with the AT bus, meaning that it has memory access and cache access and everything at 40 megahertz. In order to run this guy, I've got to switch a jumper that pulls our AT bus down to 33 megahertz. That's going to slow down memory transfer, but we've also got it clock doubled to 66. So we'll have 26 more megahertz as far as the CPU speed goes, but we're missing 7 on the front side bus. 
So now we've got our DRX266 installed. The Cyrix variant of this particular processor I don't believe needs a utility to get the double clock going. It does it by default. Yeah, there it is. So let's get into a benchmark here. Looks like it's quite a bit faster than the last chip as far as this benchmark goes. Uh, I believe the DLC40 was at about 170. So this would be a 30% increase or so above the other. Uh, as far as clock rate goes, that sounds close. But that is some incredible scaling if that's true. The, I've been trying to research this processor online and it can be kind of hard to do because this came at a time where there wasn't really anybody looking for these processors. The 386 systems were being superseded. 486 had been out long enough that those boards had come down significantly in price. So there really wasn't much of a need to get a processor like this. The conflicting info that I'm finding is that some people say that these processors had green Cyrix heat sinks glued to the tops. It's pretty obvious that this processor never actually had a heat sink glued to it, so it may not have, but it does feel really warm when it's running. It's interesting that it wouldn't have one. I wonder how hot it's running doing this. hundred and thirty one so far that's Fahrenheit by the way 20.8 that is not a significant increase over the DLC 40 uh, 0.8 frames per second faster in this particular test that might have something to do with the bus speed we've got 40 megahertz bus speed on the other processor and we've got a 33 megahertz bus speed on this one that's going to affect our bandwidth to and from the memory and everything the ISA bus is still clocked at 8 megahertz like it's supposed to be that doesn't change but the AT bus does change so that might be where we're getting hit just a little bit this seems to be running a little bit quicker I think it froze on us. Yes, it did. Let's see. Are we running that hot? Yeah, it's running pretty hot. About 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So this processor does work. We can try this again. See if we can get that PC player bench. It does work, but it does run a lot hotter than the other chip. I doubt I will keep this in this board. Only because it does run hot. The system here seems pretty stable other than that. So what I may end up doing is I may end up putting a jumper in so that I can select between the DX40 and the DLC40 if I want to put it in there or take it out. I don't like doing that too much. These low insertion force sockets tend to kind of get mad. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to finish this benchmark. I think the CPU might just be running too hot to do that. So maybe this CPU had a click on bench, had a click on, I don't know, it continued. It said it finished, 1.2, that's terrible timing. Yeah, that, that benchmark's not running great right now. Looks like it's a bit unstable with this chip. I may have to switch back over to the DLC40 and play around with that a little bit more. We've got, pretty 146 this chip runs hot 
I may put this one off until I find a heat sink I can clip onto it. I really don't want to glue a heat sink on it. That's not a very clean way of doing that. I like the gold Cyrix 486 386 logo on the top. So I think I may try to glue a, find a different heat sink there. And that's the end of it. We've got our 386DX40 upgrade options, the 486DLC40 and the Cyrix 486DRX266. Interesting processors to play with. Sadly, this motherboard isn't really designed to have an upgrade in it. That might be where we're getting some of our 386, uh, the DRX266 problems. I may play around with that a little bit more rest a heat sink on it, maybe put a little bit of grease on there, see if I can get that to run better. But I'm, in, I'm impressed. I have always read that the 486 DLCs are not really a worthy upgrade, but it sure does seem to improve performance by quite a bit from what I can tell. That's all for today. Have a That's all I have for today. See you next time. So I've done some more research and I've done some playing around. Even with a heat sink on it, I can't get this DRX266 to be stable in this system. I have downloaded the utility for it and I've checked to make sure cache and everything is enabled like it's supposed to be. Everything looks like it's configured correctly. I... Like I said, even with a heat sink on it, I cannot get it stable. Trying to install Doom with this chip, it fails. If I try to install Heretic with this chip, it fails to open the... It fails CRC check on a lot of the files that it's opening. So going back to the DLC40, I've been able to actually get Heretic installed. Now mind you, this is a 386 motherboard. And I did reduce the screen size a little bit. I can hear this title screen. I know exactly what music is supposed to be playing. I played this game so much when I would like visit my dad for spring break and stuff when I was young. The it's totally playable on this 486 DLC 40. Totally, play I would have been more than happy to play even with the reduced screen size as a kid. But anyway. Yeah, something's going on with this. Either it's been run for years without a heat sink and it just it's damaged or it's not compatible with this board. I am I cannot figure it out. But the DLC40 does run and it does run well. So I think I'm going to leave this board as is with the two pins soldered and the DLC40 in there. I've got another DX 386DX40 board with cash on it too, so it'll be fine there. But yeah, Went ahead and decided after filming that last segment that the 386DX never got a chance to show off what it can do in Heretic. So, I'm going to go ahead and load it up here. This is a very similar board to the other 386 board. It's got the 128 kilobytes of cache. It's a 386DX40. It doesn't have the slot for a 486 DLC. But other than that, it's almost exactly the same. It gets the same benchmark scores, everything. I think it has the same number of expansion slots even. So these boards are extremely similar. So this is what it looks like in a 386DX40. I don't see much of a difference to be quite honest, which could be the ISA bus hitting its limitation or it could just be that the 486DLC40 in real time isn't that much faster than the 386DX40. So. so there we have it, our 386DX40 upgraded to a 486DLC. Performance seems to be nice. I can't complain. I'm going to leave it like this for now. The Cyrix chip, unfortunately, I don't know what's going on with it. I'm going to have to tr maybe buy another motherboard that has an expansion slot that is known to work with this chip to get it tested or something. I'm going to have to figure that out. But 
that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching.